This movie is uh, hilarious, really, really hilarious, and I think I heard a lot of you laughing at it uh, too. Um, sometimes people say that your sophomore film outing is even more difficult to do than, than your first. Did you find this one to be more difficult to make than your first film? It was, uh, yeah, I think it was more difficult to make it physically just because it was bigger in scope and scale. But I think in terms of like that sophomore slump thing, I feel like people are often referring to like, it's harder to get it made, like to like go find the right producers and the right studio and whatnot. And uh -huh. I feel like, I don't know, because we were trying to push bottoms before Shiva Baby was even made, like it kind of, it didn't come seamlessly, but it, it I don't know, it, it worked out. It was harder to make it though, in that it was just more people. And more so people. yeah, so tell us about um, creating this. You, you co-wrote it with Rachel Sennett, mm -hmm. who plays PJ the movie yes. and was the lead in Show Baby. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about that. What's So what's your relationship with Rachel? Are you guys like, how, when did you meet each other? When did you start working together? I met Rachel when she was in the short film for Show Baby that um, the feature is based on, which I made in university. And she uh, was in school at the same time at NYU. Um, and um, we enjoyed working with each other so much on the short and I could just tell she was like so ambitious and so funny and she's a hilarious stand-up comedian and or she was and so she, I just saw her like with her goals and going to like open mics all, all the time and um, I told her I wanted to make Shiva Baby a feature and she was like that's awesome like when and how do you want to do that and like sort of asked me a million like organizational questions and then asked if I had any other ideas and I told her my one comedy idea which was a version of this and then um, asked her if she wanted to be PJ and write it with me and um, she said yes and that was six years ago um, and then we wrote Bottoms at the same time as, as I was writing Shiva Baby the feature. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So it's really interesting because um, you're Canadian, and I assume went to high school in Canada, yes. at the U.S., but Rachel is from the U.S. Mm -hmm. Is Canadian high school, like, very similar in very many ways to U.S. high school? Like, not in this way, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this was, like, my idea of, like, what I thought American high school was. <laughs> but combined with Rachel's small-town American high school experience, yeah. you know what I mean? So it, I feel like we came at it from two wonderfully different perspectives. So where did Rachel go to high school? What was her model? She went to high school in a very small town in Connecticut. Okay. Her town is like very idyllic and cute and like not run by like football players. Right. Um, but she was able to sort of like educate me a little bit on like uh, the American high school experience that I didn't understand sort of the um, intricacies of. Um, uh, but yeah, so, but she had, but, but like she was from a town that had a lot more like spirit, you know what I yeah. mean, than what I can sort of relate to. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, both of the films that you have, have made are sex themed. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to ask you um, kind of a hardball question right off the top, which and this is kind of a thick piece, so go with me. Here you go. I was something that I read uh, on Instagram the other day. Uh, Karina Longworth, who does the "You Must Remember This" podcast. Have you ever heard of her? Yeah, podcast? yeah. So she just did an erotic '80s series, and she wrote on Instagram that uh, some of their posts are uh, for her erotic '80s series are being censored by Instagram. Mm -hmm. These are screenshots from films that have existed from the 19 <laughs> since the 1980s. And she made a post that basically, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but the, po the post on Instagram was, you know, I get asked a lot if I think that sex, that, that we're in the U.S. not really making the kind of film, erotic films that we made in the 1980s and, and why. And she was like, to me, this is a good example right here. The, the fact that Instagram is now censoring something like this and sort of like asking the questions around why is this censored now? Like what's going on? Like what, if there are, is it less sex themed films and sex in films, is it an organized conspiracy? I don't wanna say conspiracy, but is it an organized effort by somebody? So I just wanted to ask you, 
do you feel like you've had a lot of pushback on your film, making your films because of their sexual themes? And do you feel like you, did you did you feel like you had pushback, like you had to fight with, for them, or that you people were trying to censor you in any way making your films? I didn't feel that anyone was trying to censor me who was in on making the movie, like, or both movies, like, in terms of our producers or financiers or studio. Like, everyone who signed up to make the movie with me understood the movie we were making, and both of them were very sexual in their own way. Um, but in terms of, like, <coughs> other collaborators or people that could potentially be helping us, um, uh, yeah, we ran into definitely people who, or folks who didn't, um, who found bottoms in particular too offensive to um, be associated with. Um, like, we, we shot in New Orleans, and there were a lot of locations that are either owned by the church or the parish, and um, uh, we lost a lot of locations once people sort of figured out what the movie was about. Um, or even just like product placement stuff, like not that our movie was riding on, like riding or dying on like, I don't know, like iPhones or whatever, but like uh, every, almost every single corporation that like waves their pride flag in June said the movie was too offensive to be associated with. Um, and yeah, that was sort of, I kind of like, I was just so naive. I think I remain naive when it comes to making sexual movies or gay movies or whatever it is and I think that's a good thing like I think that I just try to keep being like everyone wants to see this and or there's <laughs> there's an audience for this somewhere and so I'll just keep making it until you know people tell me not to but um yeah I don't know um thankfully though like our support like the people making it like I said it's never like the studio was like wait a second actually this movie's too sexual you know what I mean like they yeah. they they bought it, they understood it, and, and they right. let me do what I wanted with it. Um, so I felt you grateful in that way. You don't even actually show any sex in any of your films. I know. <laughs> well, that's what's crazy about it. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Well, I mean, yeah, you don't. Bottoms. Show the baby starts with a sex scene, but you can't. Right. It's kind of blurry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, did you think that you were being rejected because it's queer and sexual, or just yes. purely the sexual, just the fact that it was sexual at all. I think queer and queerness. female, yeah. Yeah, I think that, um, I think it would have been a little different if it was like a super bad or American Pie, if it was like two boys trying to lose their virginities. But yeah, so I, I think so. But I don't, no one was like, this is too gay. They were just Dicks, like. it's okay. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. it's like, yeah, we're gonna. We're gonna yeah, do yeah, it. hell yeah, uh, <laughs> exactly, no. Um, so let's talk about your actors. We talked about Rachel. Uh, let's talk about Io. How yeah. long have you known Io? We've known Io, Rachel and I, since NYU days, so also like seven years. Um, her and Rachel used to do like these sketches together at NYU that weirdly our DP Maria also shot before I even met Maria, um, where they, they Rachel would write them and get all her comedian friends to be in them. Um, some of them don't exist anymore, um, but uh, like they've been taking down. But they worked together a bunch, and I, I was always just been so hilarious, and they did stand-up together all the time, and it's just so funny now, like, she's had such a rise, and I'm so proud of her as her friend and, and collaborator, um, but, like, I don't know, we were all just, like, friends, and I was, like, a writer's assistant yeah. for years, and then, like, was in writer's rooms, and, um, you know, she's an incredible improviser and, and a wonderful actor. Um, I feel like the it. part that she plays on the bear is so different, and that's where I first saw her. Yeah. And so in this part, I was just like, wow, she's so funny. And yeah. so, like, she has that gift of comic timing. They both do so, just they're just on it. And um, I don't know, I just think it's great. She's getting to show her chops, yeah. both in something serious and something that's just this crazy funny. Was a, so was it mostly scripted, or did you allow them to do improvisation? I definitely allowed Rachel and I to do improv oh, to a fault, where I was like starting to get confused as to like what we were doing. Um, but it was so much fun to watch them, and especially Io. She she prefers improv. I don't think she ever like read a line sort of on the first take that as scripted, and then I would be like, okay, like can we can we try to get it as scripted? She'd be like, fine, but um, yeah. Uh, I kind of had to because I just knew that it was going to be so much better if I let them have that freedom. But it was scary to do improv, I feel like. Uh, 
What about um, uh, 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 Marsha and Lynch? <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't he do an improv show? Murderville. For Netflix. Yeah. In Murderville. Yes, that's where I watched him. And is that how you got the idea to do? I didn't get the idea. Alana, the head of Orion, it was her idea. Okay. She saw an article that was like. Basically, I think it was like Deadline or whatever. It was like he was funnier and outdid like all the other comedians on that show. And um, I watched it, and then yeah, I agreed with her that we should we should have him in Bottoms. And um, I didn't know who he was before, um, but uh, I mean, I thought it would be so cool to like have someone completely different from a different world, in yeah. a different industry, like do this. Who was so funny. He is phenomenally funny, and I really loved him as the as the teacher. Um, you know, and then teacher. even though. The kid that we love to hate, uh, who plays the the head football player, Jeff. Yeah, Nicholas. He's great in this. Yeah, part. he's fantastic, Nick. He's he's so good. His whole like, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so good. It's, he's played like a version of like literally Prince Charming or the hot guy, like or the brooding sort of like romantic lead in teen movies, like now a couple times in different ways. Uh -huh. And so I feel like I think he had fun sort of making fun of that he's done that a bunch and this yeah. this was more of a silly version of that exact same character that he's done but he was so good yeah he was awesome so where did you actually shoot this new orleans in new orleans yeah was it at a real high school or junior high or? it was because we were shooting it in football season which was like oh. the worst decision ever i don't know why and me again not knowing <laughs> anything about how that works in this country <laughs> um didn't prepare for that so we it ended up being a concoction of like a university gym a random parking lot somewhere uh I don't actually think we shot in a high school at all I think we we found like a basically abandoned like elementary school that we like it was almost like a stage and we used the hallways and created a classroom brought in lockers um we tried our best we toured many high schools there and then I don't know it was just it didn't work out, um, and none of the private schools wanted us because um, mm -hmm. they were all Catholic. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so no, no high schools actually. It was like seven different places. Well, it all worked really well. <laughs> Good, I'm, I'm glad. glad. Your mishmash, <laughs> what you had, worked really well. Thank but you. I kept looking at it and being like, school looks so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> but then also, like all school, it it shocks me. It feels like our education system is, is one of the few things that has not changed drastically in this country. Like if you go, if I go to a high school or a junior high, which I don't very often, but I feel like it all feels so much the same as when I was in school in like the late 80s and 90s. Well, we tried to find locations that had elements of like a timeless feel like I and I, I kind of would put my foot down on it like I really wanted old brick in the building the way that like I would see it in like John Hughes movies and I really wanted wooden bleachers in the gym I didn't want like modern yeah. shiny whatever um and and I I so we sort I'm glad you're saying that design, yeah, yeah yeah we kind of picked that timeless. so that was yeah that was another question I was going to ask is were you inspired by any other teen movies the John Hughes movies uh -huh. were like what was popular when I was a teenager I went to all the John I went to the first run that's I'm telling you how old I am right now, I <laughs> yeah um, definitely which teen movies I, I love teen movies. movies like I I've, I've seen every single time period of teen movies that I could I mean when I was growing up it was like the Y2K like can't be movies like and the rom-coms of the late 90s and early 2000s so like bring it on and 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 10 things I had about you and she's all that and like but I'm a cheerleader and um you know uh sugar and spice and uh, jawbreakers like what drop, drop it gorgeous like those were that was like the moment um all the Kirsten Dunst movies like strike and dick um and then um, I, I mean, I watched, you know, I went back and discovered like John Hughes and like Heather's and, you know, like all that stuff. And then I think for this, with the timeless feel, like I revisited also like more like classic like Americana movies like Grease and American Graffiti and I don't know, other movies that I, I was trying to just take inspiration from these stereotypes that have been created since that time period of yeah. like the jock and the cheerleader yeah. and sort of try to put our queer characters in this zone that has existed for so long. So, <coughs> how do you, 
uh, one of the things that I marveled at in this movie is the ba is the balance of having you know your protagonists are queer, and yet they're so messed with by everybody in this high school, including the principal. <laughs> How do you feel like when you're cutting this, you sort of balance the humor so that it doesn't get too offensive towards, like they're not too, too shit on. They're still, I mean, they're very shit on. <laughs> what was it, my, one of my favorite lines is, um, uh, the, the untalented and unattractive queers, please come to the uh, <laughs> How did you think of things like that? What, 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 you like, what made you feel like this, in this world of this movie, these queers would be like kind of shit on it? Um, I think we wanted to make it clear that like they're losers not because they're gay, but because they're like not like I think like the way you can be gay at least like when I was in high school and accepted is if you were like super talented and hot do you know what I mean like as the theater okay. gay so the more shit on because they're untalented yeah because they're basic <laughs> gays you know like I feel right. like you have to be the exceptional gay in <laughs> high school or in the okay. world in order to be accepted so it's the you're not a cheerleader or a jock so you're that's and that's very traditional high school yeah yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that we just wanted to show that they're being shit on because they're losers. You know, they just happen to be gay. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> that, worked, that worked really well. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, did anybody have a question that they wanted to ask? No? I'll do all the questions if you want. Did you ever go to Juvie for real? No. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know anybody that went to juvie? No. Did I Rachel said to go to juvie? She didn't, but she used to do theater um, in high school, and they would like travel her little theater troupe to the juvies to like perform for them. Oh, I guess I don't oh, know. Really? Yeah. Is that where you got the idea to have the juvie? I don't know. No, I don't think so. Um, no, I think I don't know how that. We were just thinking about like where where somewhere that they could lie about being that they would think is badass or something. I don't know. Um, so one of my favorite scenes is um, uh, Josie's lesbian mentor, <laughs> mm -hmm. played by Pucky Johnson. Yeah. She's really Can you tell me about this amazing scene? Like, where did you get the idea for this? Like, <laughs> um, it just comes out of nowhere, and I was like, it's perfect. Oh, I wish I could just be like, I thought of this out of nowhere, and I just thought this would be such a fun cameo for like a cool queer actor but actually there was like this whole other storyline that the movie had that got cut that Punky's character had a bigger role mm -hmm. in that the beginning of the movie actually was supposed to take place at this weird camp for corny girls where it wasn't like inversion therapy but it was like a military kind of camp where you got sent if you were like too horny just as a girl <laughs> oh and my God, okay. Punky ran the camp um, and it was like only a few scenes, but audience like test screenings, people were like, I don't know what's going on. And the lie was that they went to juvie when really they went to this like crazy camp. So there was this whole sort of backstory um, and that's where Punky's character was established. And then we tried to salvage this camp in so many ways. And we kept on being like, how does Punky's character make any sense? Like if we have to get rid of this and then eventually we were like, I think we just, we, we say like, that she was her babysitter or her mentor or whatever and we just got to keep the cameo in there and like make it work and I yeah. just kept on being like oh my god no one's gonna get this this is so random but um then I thought the movie's pretty random it really so does. It really works. <laughs> I'm glad you thought so I mean basically all she does is just walk up on her like in her trailer and I never had any questions about who the fuck is this you know? <laughs> like what's this doing in here it was just all so completely hilarious Including the last part of it, where where Punky's like, rah, 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 and I was like, I didn't, I just, just didn't really <laughs> understand any of that. <laughs> it was funny. Yeah. Uh, it, so much of it, I think, just felt like so spontaneous. So, are you? Do you feel like? I mean, I don't want you to put yourself in a box, but do you feel like comedy is where you want to be and you want to stay? No, I don't think so. No. Not that I, I, I'd love to do a comedy again, but I just hope to do something in every genre. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, do you have something ready to go for your next? Not ready to go the way that like Bottoms was ready to go, yeah. um, oh. but uh, 
I have other ideas, yes. Things in progress. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> You're not going to give us a clue? <laughs> I don't, I could, I could tell you. I mean, I have other ideas I'm working on, but I don't know which one would be next. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like a lesbian rock opera. <laughs> I, yeah, I, maybe. I mean, I, <laughs> I want to do other, like a horror movie and like a sci-fi. Yeah, totally. I think what you're doing, not that you have to stay in comedy, but I just want to say, I think that what you're doing is hard to pull off. Comedy's hard to pull off. I really believe that comedy is tougher to do and tougher, it's tougher to make something that you'll let people will laugh out loud at. So congratulations to you. Thank you. It's, Shiva Baby and this are both hilarious and wonderful. I think that this is such a fresh, it just feels fresh. Um, I'm wondering what you think people's takeaway from this will be. Well, I'm wondering what you think this film says about uh, uh, queer people's position like in the world. Because, you know, like in the John Hughes films that I grew up with, there was no mention of anybody being queer besides someone being called faggot at one point in the movie, and then that was about it, right? We weren't acknowledged, we were invisible, pretty much. And that's pretty much my high school experience, too. If anything queer or any person who was queer did come, it was kind of squashed. Nobody talked about it, nobody came out. I'm wondering what you're saying with this movie of what you think the position of queers is now, because we're in a strange place in this country with it, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, honestly, like, I I really, that I completely hear what you're saying. I think I wanted to make something where, like, queer people could watch themselves and not have to think too hard about their identity. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And just, like, just see themselves and, right. like, be entertained. Like, right. just see themselves and laugh and not have to think too deeply about like what does this mean or um, whatever like yeah. I, I think I just wanted to make something stupid you know or just be like I'm a lesbian and I'm horny too exactly <laughs> exactly yeah like that's it like literally <laughs> the, right. the takeaway is like as dumb as like we I don't know like I you want it to be like I don't think if anyone has any smarter yeah. thoughts about sort of what this means that's amazing but that definitely didn't come from my head so, <laughs> yeah. did you see any of the, the crazy weirdo sex comedies of the 80s like Last American Virgin and Porky's and I did it. You guys see all watch, those? I would watch catch some of them on TV, but now this they're hard to watch. This kind of reminded me, like dramatic, because that's all that those comedies were about was people trying to get laid. Yeah, no, I, I think I was more influenced by what was influenced by that, uh, which was like American Pie and Super yeah. Bad. Yeah. But, but yes, everyone has referred to Porky's like so many times <laughs> okay, in the last okay. month. Um, I'm glad it wasn't only me. No, no, everyone keeps saying Porky's. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I gotta you watch this check movie. It out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a glory hole in it. It was my first exposure to a glory <laughs> hole. Was, uh, I didn't even know I was being exposed to something queer at like 12 years old. Uh, Mrs. Balbricker. Um, I oh, do you have a question? Yeah, I just yeah. have one quick question. Hi, I'm Shakira. Hi. Um, the movie was such a fun ride, and I thought it really, it balanced out not getting too woke and just like letting people experience as people be queer. I was curious what made you decide for PJ to not get the girl in the end. Um, uh, well, thank you for saying that. Yeah. Um, I think, well, I think one, we were like, I think that's too easy or something. I mean, I think that like we debated for so long, like, do we need to explain what Isabel and Brittany's sexualities are, like, so that we know that they're not trying to like turn them or something? And then we were like, no, like that's so like millennial, like let's just like let everyone breathe in their sexualities and whatever. Um, and just like you don't need to answer all these questions. And anyway, I mean, I have experiences with <laughs> queer baiting and with lots of. You know, and I think so many queer women have experiences with straight girls, I don't know, pretending to kind of be queer a little or whatever, what? flirting or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what can you be talking about? So I think that was funneled into it. And also I think it was just like, we didn't want it to be so like, la la la, like, and then they both get the girl and, and that check mark, we wanted to do something slightly unexpected. So um, yeah, I think that that's just where that came about. I, I feel like, you know, you're only two films in, and I expect that you're, you know, going to be many more 
films in, and uh, I don't, you know, 20 years down the road, we'll talk again, you're gonna be like 50 films in. But the accomplishment that you've made with uh, this many films at, at the age that you are, you're still really young, and is, is a huge accomplishment. And I'm just wondering what, um, I'm imagining that it's been very hard to be an indie filmmaker. I'm just wondering what it is that you use for inspiration, because we have a lot of, usually have a lot of members that are um, indie filmmakers trying to make their first, trying to make their second, or just trying to stay in there. What do you use for inspiration? Do you have like a group of people around you that keep you going? And yeah, well, thank you for saying that. Um, I think honestly, it sounds so cheesy and like cliche, but like it's working with other people, like young people or young filmmakers or people young in their careers, like who feel equally invested in you and in themselves and like believe. This sounds so like cheesy, but it, it's so hard to make movies and it's so hard to make indies, like your first one. And you just like need people who are gonna be as crazy as you, like and like jump off like a building with you, and like literally put all your energy and time toward yeah. trying to get money or trying to get casting or whatever it is that's your first few steps. And Rachel was that for me, um, and I don't think I would have like. I think she done said it. that about you too. It's interesting in interviews you guys say the same thing about each other, which yeah. is that you guys have are each other's support system it's yeah you need it I think like I just think you you can't just you can't do it alone like you really can't it's like too much so it, whether it, you know and, and my producers on Shiva Baby also sort of threw in and gave gave a lot of their energy and time and and, and we're I went to film school with them and we're you want to be with a bunch of people who want to prove themselves it, and and doing it together yeah. is oh. kind of yeah the only way yeah and also it's so interesting it was so interesting to see this and realize that all three of you knew each other, you, Rachel, and Io, and I was like, wow, there's like a community of filmmakers and artists going on where you're all working on each other's things. Yeah. All supporting each other. I just love that. Like the Safety Brothers started out in a collective that was called Red Bucket. And it was a bunch of filmmakers that would all work on each other's projects and that's how they started out. And I I know collectives don't often work out, but like, you know, communities of artists, it feels like, it feels like there must have been a lot of people in those few years of NYU that you were there that were all, that have all kind of like come together to work on stuff together. Yeah, definitely. And, and now there's, I think, a handful of us from my year at least that have done really well, like Kit Zohar, uh, who just had her second movie at South By called Close to Me, or This Closeness. Um, uh, both her movies were with movie. Um, it, it was a peer, and um, it feels really, really cool. Yeah, I mean, and and Molly Gordon didn't go to NYU, but she met Io through Rachel and I. Um, uh, she was in Shiva Baby, and then Io was in Theater Camp, which just came out this summer. And then also Molly acts in The Bear, and so it's really cool to be like part of this community that's like coming up at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. very exciting. Yeah. I'm an admirer. I'm an admirer of all of you. So thank you. Uh, good question. Yep. When did Elizabeth Banks get involved in this? Um, Elizabeth got involved um, uh, in April of 2020 when Shiva Baby was supposed to go to South by Southwest, but it didn't. And so people kind of heard about it because it was supposed to go, but no one could see it. Because COVID. Because of COVID, it was like the first big world event, or one of the big, one of those like, is this a real kind of thing? South by was canceled. Um, yeah, and. Uh, uh, she and, and her producer, Elizabeth, uh, Allison Small, watched Shiva Baby um, on like a link that was being sent around. Um, and, uh, and then we sent them the script for Bottoms and mm -hmm. they just like jumped on board. We'd sent it to so many other producers before who said no or didn't get it. But um, Elizabeth and, and her husband Max and Allison just like were so enthusiastic and, and wanted to make it with us. So she came on pretty quick. Yeah, it just reminds me a little bit of like Pitch Perfect. It just really did. Yeah, yeah. Sort of, you know? Totally. I mean, so I could see why she'd want to get attached to this. Yeah. She's 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 done so many comedies yeah, and, yeah. and on her own. But yeah, like that's a franchise that like 
also kind of has camp and, and a weird tone yeah. and yeah you know yeah. and she's so supportive of working with female directors and yeah. um you know um yeah so that definitely played a part in sort of understanding like oh this will be the right partner because she understands like mm -hmm. making stuff with all women and where it's weird you right. know yeah. um so when when does this come out it's this week it comes out friday right. here um new york san francisco and uh, okay. Austin, and then the next week, September first, it comes out everywhere else. So. And is, is Shiva Baby being re-released? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that deserves a round of applause. Yeah. When does that come out? Again? It's it's been out. It's been out. for the last okay. couple weekends um, in in a handful of cities. It's like two screenings at like okay. one theater in like each city. Um, but yeah, it's it's had it's a little just moment. <laughs> amazing that they wanted to do it again. Fantastic. Utopia is awesome. That's our yeah. distributor. They yeah. just were like, oh, Bottoms is coming out. Cool. Like, let's bring Shiva back. So, yeah. Double feature. Yeah, yeah. double feature. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, and thank you. Us. Thank you for watching yeah. it here. And yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>